Back at Cottrell Field, getting ready for the first pitch. Number five, the Freedom Falcons taking on the number three seed, the James Logan Colts. Freedom Falcons with their work cut out for them, bringing a 19-5-1 record into this game, taking on the 25-1 James Logan Coates. Let's set the outfield for the Colts. In left field, it is Tatiana Salazar. In center, Laxi Matos. And over in right, Kimberly Goulart. Starting at third today, Deanne Garza. Taylor Peters is the shortstop. Clarissa Blacara over at second. The first baseman is Melina Rodriguez. Kaylee Bonansea is the catcher. And in the circle today, it is Rayanne Garza, the senior strong. The Freedom Falcons leading off the second baseman, excuse me, the third baseman, Marissa Gasca. Ashley Garcia batting second and the second baseman. Batting third, the left fielder, Nikki Kalayali. Livy a lion, the first baseman, is batting cleanup, followed by the pitcher, Maddie Williams, then the shortstop, Emma Ryan. Adrian Davenport, the catcher, bats seventh, followed by center fielder, Emily Leva, and Regan Turnus, the right fielder. Behind the plate today, Matt Alvarez calling balls and strikes. Out on the bases, over at first, Bill Smith. Over at third, Tim Miltner. High school girls softball, seven innings. There are a couple of mercy run rules, which that tournament decided game early in April 20 to three was more than likely a mercy run rule. We'll get to that if that is the case as the Falcons send up the left-handed left hitter, Marissa Gasca. Ray and Garza, the older sister of a teammate, in the circle, first pitch underway. Gasca looks at strike one. Gasca also coming in with sterling numbers of her own, 19 and one in ERA under one. Throwing the heat for ball one, one and one. Of course, just to add to that, 115 strikeouts compared to 13 walks, so very, very good control. And what her coach, Terry Johnson, talks about, incredible movement on her ball. The 1-1, one, one, a big swing and a miss. One and two. Both of our starting pitchers today have been on varsity and been the go-to pitchers for all four years of their high school careers. The 2-1 and one delivery. Two and two, the count. Correction. A lot of chatter from Freedom, and just like that, one batter faced, one goes down swinging as Ashley Garcia steps up. Well, one of the note about, about Garza that Coach Terry Johnson was telling me is that she has loved watching her pitch in big games, and her, her exact words were, for such a little player, she does come up in big games. And our first base runner as Ashley Garza hit by a pitch. So one on one down for Kaleali of Freedom. It's going to be our first test to see how well Garza holds the runner at first. And of course with Kaleali, one of the better hitters on this Freedom team, 388 average. Off speed, lays down the bunt. And the sacrifice bunt by Kealali moves the base runner to second. Two down, runner in scoring position as a lion, the cleanup hitter, steps in. So Freedom, I think, is happy to have a base runner in scoring position here in the first against the formidable Ray Ann Garza. And you notice bunting on the first pitch. Two things we notice here. You don't normally ask your third hitter to bunt, which is already an oddity in of itself. But Coach Brooke Russo was saying that they have to be aggressive against Garza. If she gives you a pitch, don't be afraid to swing at it. A lion looks at ball one. Lion, the first baseman, good size. Top of the first, North Coast section, division one championship game. And outside for ball two. James Logan coached by Terry Johnson in her 29th season. Sorry, sure, sorry to see her ace go after this season. And paints the corner for two and one. 
good first strike there, and it's still two and one, so Kaliali can be a little bit more s selective here. Count still in her favor. Foul tip, four, two, and two. Sorry, that's uh, Libby Elian. As Kaleli actually was bunted the runner over to second, but El Elian here, you go from you go from uh, frying pan into the fire. A lion with a 403 average leads the team in home runs too. Two two takes the off speed, drills it for a base hit. Runner coming home could be a play at the plate, and she is out. So great throw on the money, and after heading into the bottom of the first, no runs on no hits, no errors. One left on base. What a rally by the James Logan Coats. Great defensive play. Well, what a great throw by Lexi Matos out there in center field. It was a one hopper, but give credit to Bonansea, who was right there, to field it correctly and then apply the tag right at the end. So already some thrilling moments here in the first inning. Absolutely. So correction, no runs on one hit. No errors, one left stranded. Heading at the bottom of the first 0-0 zero, zero the score as the Freedom Falcons take the outfield. Over at left field is Kealali, Nikki Kealali. Center today, Emily Leva. Regan Turnis is the right fielder. Playing third base today, Marissa Gaska. Emma Ryan is the shortstop. Ashley Garcia at second. Garcia headed to Ohio State in the fall. One to keep our eye on for sure. Elian is the first baseman. And behind the plate today, Adrian Davenport, the catcher. And rounding out the battery, Maddie Williams, the senior. Williams will play at Humboldt State in the fall as Logan leads off. Hitting first, Kimberly Goulart, the right fielder, followed by Clarissa Blaquera. Rayon Garza, the pitcher, hits in the number three spot. The designated player is Michaela Burpee, hitting in place of the left fielder Salazar. Kaylee Bonansea, the catcher, hits fifth, followed by Melina Rodriguez, Taylor Peters, Deanne Garza, and Lexi Matos. So Goulart, this lineup for James Logan is strong from top to bottom the, as the corners step in, expecting a slap hitter and a delayed call, but a First pitch, a strike by Williams. Williams also the ace for this Freedom staff. And who else would you rather have to pitch this big Division One championship? Rise ball way up out of the zone as Goulart lays off for one and one. So again, the defense in. And with Williams, they haven't really had to call on their bullpen very much. Of the 22 games she started, 18, she has gone the whole way. This one popped up out of play here at Cottrell Field. One ball, two strikes to Goulart. Just a, a few more numbers to throw out there for Madison Williams. How about this? 141 innings pitched, 44 walks, 170 strikeouts. That is good production from the senior as the rise ball again, this time outside for two and two. So both pitchers today throw in a lot of heat, known for their good movement as well. With Williams, she can throw all three pitches for strikes, too. 2-2. Two, two. This one popped up out of play as Goulart extending this at-bat. As much as we've been talking about Madison Williams, let's not forget this Logan lineup has at least a handful of players with that batting average above 400. So she's going to be going through a gauntlet on this one. Everyone a threat in the dirt for full count. So perhaps not what Maddie Williams was looking for here in this first batter faced, but Goulart battling. The payoff pitch. Base on balls for Goulart as Blacara steps in with the base runner. No outs here in the bottom of the first. And Goulart gave Williams a good battle there to start off. And that's really what you want your leadoff here to do. Work the pitch count. She fouled off a couple of pitches. Really start to get Williams' pitch count up early. Now you got a runner on first here, and Blacara, who actually leads the team in runs, is going to is going to step in as well. Blacara, who will 
play for William Jessup. That college is located in Rockland. Lays down the bunt, almost grabbed in the air, and an off-balance throw allows the runner to, well, they're saying they got her. So, Blacara at first, one out. I thought the runner was safe, it but was not a, the case. It was a very good throw, throw there by Olivia Elian and really perfectly placed. I mean, that, that bunt couldn't have been any, any, any more fortunate bounce. One hopper, she just fired it right to second, and not the bunt that Blacara wanted. Garza looks at strike one. Rayann Garza, her younger sister, sophomore, Deanne Garza. The third baseman, she will hit eight. So one down, one on. And this one hit hard towards center field. But the play is made, two outs. So some good distance, not a whole lot of field here at Cottrell Field. There's some good contact there, but Emily Leva was just right there waiting for it. Had to take a few steps back but was able to camp out under it. So it's already two down, and you really have to wonder if that bunt had gone according to plan. You'd be looking at a whole different scenario, probably looking at a runner in scoring position here. Michaela Burpee, the designated player, steps in. So two down, one on. Burpee drills one, but Ooh. foul down the left field line. Great contact. Just a split second too early, but going down that line was a very, very good idea as the outfield really playing straight away, so they're not really going down the lines, but Burpee coming in with a 5'10 <laughs> batting average. So two outs, and you need a, need a runner brought home. She is, she is the one you want up there. It's so fun getting to these championship games and seeing the batting average. I mean, so many times they're around 500 or over 500. It speaks to why the teams are here in the first place. Big cut for 0-2, and, and they got her. So the stolen base attempt no good and we have got a ball game after one inning of play zero zero the score oh a snap throw right to right back to first adrian davenport putting together a highlight real play and catching the runner sleeping over there at first base so a little bit of a mental error sort of nipping a rally in the bud for james logan so after one scoreless so in some ways opportunities lost squandered a bit by mm -hmm. both teams but that speaks to what is on the line here a north coast section title And fans, do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here this afternoon? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Kirsten Fairchild's alongside Philip Kern, the North Coast Section Division I Championship game. Thank you for joining us on playonsports.com this afternoon. The pitcher, Maddie Williams, to lead things off here in the second for the Freedom Falcons. Number five hitter, looks at ball one. The game really going at a very good pace right now. Not, neither pitcher really taking a whole lot of time to get set up. And fouled off for one and one. Looks like our catcher, Bonasea, calling this game. Love to see that at the high school level. Very important, I think as she frames, but doesn't get the call. Two balls, one strike to Williams. Like you brought up at the high school level, usually you see with games like this, the coaches are calling the yeah, game and they're just call. relaying signals to the catcher. Change up. Ooh. Gets the call, two and two. <laughs> and Madison Williams had to take a step out of the batter's box for a second there. I don't think she expected the change up, but it was probably in a place where she wanted, she just couldn't pull the trigger. Some heat, but missing inside. Full count to Williams, pitcher facing pitcher. Off speed, this one popped up to shallow center and the catch is made. So one retired as Emma Ryan, the shortstop, steps in. 
Alexi Matos already getting some reps in on this one, already with the great throw. Back, forward. Right, exactly. She's covering all bases here. The, the, the highlight reel throw to home plate, and now she covers uh, covering center field very nicely. Ryan, the shortstop. Freedom Falcons up. Ball one. So Deanne Garza looking a little out of the ordinary here, struggling a bit. And okay. apologies to Rayan, Rayan Garza in the circle. Deanne Garza over at third. Well, Garza is still trying to find her rhythm a little bit, trying yeah. to find that strike zone. But so far, nothing's really hurt Ooh, her. Peck. Her second. I stand corrected. Hit batter. And exactly in the first, one out, and then a hit batsman. So Ryan is aboard, one down, as the catcher Davenport steps in. Well, of course, now that's her second hit batsman already, and it's already the second inning. So she's still trying to find that release point that she's comfortable with. I think once she finds that, it won't be a big issue finding the strikes. But that release point for a pitcher is always important. And it's runner going. This one hit high to left field. And the out is made. Ryan jogs back to first, which she did not stray too far from, as Leva, the center fielder, steps in. Two down, one on for Freedom in the top of the second. And Freedom so far heeding their coach's advice. They are being very, very aggressive. Davenport going after the first pitch she saw. So Russo really giving them the green light to swing at any time. And you see the slap hitting stance by Leva. Some disagreement from the fans. Can you imagine that? Disagreeing with balls no, and strikes di call? Disagreement? That never happens. And foul tip. So 0 and 2, the count. Leva swing at the ball, kind of reminding me of uh, Ichiro Suzuki running up and trying to slap at the ball and get a couple of steps head start out of the batter's box. Remember, have to make contact in the box. Ball one. So one and two, the count to Leva. On the step she's going, she's going right to the very edge of the batter's box. So Leva needs to be a little bit judicious where she's at. And swung on for the strikeout to end the inning. For the Falcons, no runs on no hits, no Logan errors, one left on base, heading into the bottom of the second. 0-0 zero, zero the score here at Cottrell Field. We expected the pitching to really take center stage early on, and so far it has, with the exception of maybe a couple of defensive highlights that have happened already. But really, Garza start, starting to figure things out a little bit. She had a little bit better time finding the strike zone, but she does have two hit batsmen already on the, in these first two wings. But Williams had a pretty... Pretty uneventful first inning, and if you're freedom, that's exactly what you want. And something else that Coach Russo was telling me about, too, is that the defense behind Williams is going to play a very, very important role. As long as they don't make any mistakes, they can limit Logan's opportunities because with a team as good as they are, I mean, I'm talking about the Logan Colts here, you give them an opportunity or you extend an inning by any sort of, any sort of mental or scoreboard error, who knows what could happen. So we'll see Burpee again. Remember, she was up at bat when the steal attempt was foiled on Blacara. Kayla Blurpee, Burpee, the designated player. Number of players from each squad going on to play at the next level, where the whether that's independent, D3, even some D1 players out on the field. Burpee again hitting in place of the left fielder, Salazar. So our plate umpire calling time. And safety always paramount here at any softball game, but in particular at the high school level, making sure people are where they need to be in the dugout. And equipment is what it is supposed to be. So now we're ready to get going. Wipe the slate clean for Burpee. She was at 0-2 in the previous at bat. And she looks at ball one. 
we're seeing a little bit of a different approach here from Logan so far. We were talking about how Freedom was wanting to be very, very aggressive with Garza. With Williams, they're more content to work the count. Hit it going after a rise ball and backing up, making the play is the shortstop. So on the second pitch, Burpee will head to the dugout, and that'll bring up the catcher, Kaylee Bonansea. There you're seeing exactly what the rise ball is supposed to do. Williams really getting Burpee to, to get it to fall into design to really try to lift and separate on that pitch and not really get any backspin on it. And it's just a harmless shallow fly ball to, to short. Ryan making the play at short as Bonin say his first look since April at Williams. She looks at a ball in the dirt. Pitch in the dirt as corners in here. Drilled, roped, out of play. Everyone's heart in their throat on that <laughs> side of the field. That had some heat on it. Bonansea had the right idea, and I think that was the right pitch she wanted. Contact made, drilled for a base hit. The first of the ball game for the Logan Colts comes courtesy, courtesy of Kaylee Bonansea. And good approach, just going right back up the middle, not really trying to do more with the pitch than she should, but really wanted to just trying to get a rally going for the Logan Colts, and does so right back up the middle. Really, no one could get there. One down, one aboard for Melina Rodriguez, the first baseman. As time called for that ball to come in. Trail field, the site here at St. Mary's College in Moraga. Expecting a bunt. High and outside for ball one as Rodriguez lays off. Bunt and Sia trying to get that, those couple extra steps off of first base. Logan trying to start a rally any way they can. Drilled over the shortstop's head as the runner heading to third, in at third, and now no one covering first. They might have been able to get Rodriguez in a rundown. So back-to-back -back singles and runners on the corner for the Colts as a shortstop, Taylor Peters, liking how the table is set here. Well, runners at the corners and Bonansea, great aggressive base running, pretty much going on contact, knew that was gonna hit the ground and getting that extra, extra base there. But Rodriguez almost got a little too greedy there trying yeah. to go to second. And of course with Taylor Peters, it's not every day you see a hitter who is towards the bottom in batting average for a team at 411. She hits it into left center. One run comes in, another as well. It's a stand up double to score as the Colts take a two nothing lead courtesy of Taylor Peters. Well, so much for being content on working the count. Just looking at these last couple of hitters, Rodriguez goes after the second pitch she sees. Peters doesn't waste any time. Goes after the first pitch she sees, runs it all the way to the wall, and a two-run double to start off for Logan. And another first test for Madison Williams on the mound. What with one out, Bon and Saya got things started. She's the number five hitter. This is Deanne Garza, the third baseman, as she swings at a rise ball for 0 and 1. Her timing was good on that one too. Fouled straight back. Just missed it. Runner on second. One out. Williams has given up three consecutive hits. The 0 1 off speed outside. One and one. Now it'll be up to Williams to try to stop the bleeding here a little bit. Still has a runner in scoring position. I think she'll probably want to pitch for the strikeout right here. De delivery called strike for one and two. So Williams trying to regroup after three consecutive hits by the Colts. Bottom of the second. It's a two nothing lead as the off speed goes over the third baseman's glove. One run to come in, play at the plate too late. It's a three nothing Colts lead. There you see Garza just moving the line, 
but a great effort there by Marissa Gasca. The ball just barely grazing the top of her glove. They'll probably credit that as a double for Garza. And just keeps the line moving. Now Lexi Matos, who's already had a couple of highlight reel plays on defense, try to add to her highlight reel today. So that credited as a hit as Lexi Matos, the number nine hitter, steps in, fouls back the first pitch. So three in here in the second. Garza at second. Just one out. That first batter retired on a pop-up to short. Ground ball to first, easily handle as the runner advances. Second out, however, which Williams right now. Pitching for outs. At this point, that's what you had to do. I mean, unfortunately, it moves the runner over to third, but a very harmless ground out to first, and Li Libby Elian just taking care of business right there. So all, she, really, all, all, she really can pitch like a normal situation here. It, it can be a deep fly. I mean, she can just pitch her... Pitch to her strength at this point because all she needs is that final out. Goulart, the leadoff hitter, walked in the previous inning, looks at ball one. So we've seen a lot of heat from Williams, a lot of rise balls. Be interesting to see what else she has in her repertoire. As a fastball foul back, one and one. And just remember, Goulart last time up really worked the count on Williams. I counted at least about seven pitches in that first at bat and drew the walk. Exactly that. Deanne Garza at third, two down. Away for two and one. And you see Williams maybe starting to press a little bit. She wants to really get out of the inning and get her teammates into the dugout. That way they can get a rally going. She just needs to start throwing strikes. She really doesn't need to do anything else right now. At the very least, I mean, she has been a strikeout artist most of the season, so if she wants to pitch for the strikeout, she can. But re really doesn't need to do anything else. I mean, a deep fly is not going to score a run with two outs anyway. It's not a sack fly situation. So As Goulart calls time, maybe a contact lens or something in her eye. 2-1 the count. Two down, one on. Three nothing lead for the Colts. Fouls it back. Goulart's starting to get the timing down of Williams a little bit again. Most of, some of the foul balls we've seen from Logan in the second inning have been mostly straight back, so they are starting to time her a little bit. The two two delivery off speed, grounded to short. Some speed. But she is out. So after a challenging inning, a routine out for Freedom. But Logan, three runs on four hits. No Freedom errors, one left stranded. It's a 3 nothing lead heading into the third. A good rally there by the Logan Colts, really getting everything going. That was a little bit of a tricky hop there for Emma Ryan. It almost said she wasn't sure whether to go after the first or second hop. Didn't want to get caught in between. But very, very strong throw from short. And it finally ends the bleeding for, for freedom. And fans, Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Head coach of Freedom, Brooke Russo, in his second year. He is actually a Freedom graduate. Graduated back in 1999, linebacker on the football team, also wrestled, and really likes this team as they... Lead off here in the third, it's the number nine hitter, Reagan, Regan Ternez. Ternez looking to get a rally. Started as she looks at ball one, her team trailing three to nothing. 
And the key here for Reagan Turnes is really not to try to do too much. Just try, just get on base, start, try and start a rally here. Well, she goes after a rise ball for one and one. I have to say, uh, I haven't seen so many rise balls gone after in a game all <laughs> right? season, but Logan showing they can hit it as well. Outside, low and away, four, two, and one. So Ray and Garza mixing things up here. Two strikeouts already. Is this one a little blooper into shallow left? That'll count as a base hit. And with no outs, Turnus gets aboard, and that is a first thus far for the Freedom Falcons. And for Freedom, really, that's the first time they've gotten their leadoff hitter on to start an inning. So you'd have to think for Freedom, this is the way you want to get a rally going. You've still got time on your side here, and your defense has been very, very strong. All you really need to do is start stringing some hits together, at least start to make an impact on that scoreboard. Casca, who struck out to open the ball game, Shows bunt and fouls it off. And Coach Russo already implementing the small ball mentality, trying to make the most of any opportunity they have with any runners on just because of how tough Garza is. The 0-1. Bunted foul for 0-2 as you see Gaska show her disappointment. Yeah, the, the, the bunt game so far not really working to how Gaska wanted. So now with the 0-2, she has to abandon the bunt and start to swing. So Logan's... the Logan's defense can really sort of play back straight away. Rise ball. Outside for ball one. We see both pitchers go to that rise ball so very often. One, two. As the throw down. Not in time. Two and two the count. That was low and inside, but... <laughs> Don't tell that to some of the fans here. <laughs> oh, no. They wanted that pitch, I think, more than uh, Garza did. The third strikeout after the, uh, of the afternoon for Ray and Garza. One down. Runner at first is Ashley Garcia, who was hit by a pitch back in the first. Steps into the batter's box. I think that strikeout would do a lot for Garza, help her settle down a little bit. Now you see the middle infield playing a bit of a double play depth right now, so a ground ball to either one of them would really help. Shows the bunt, lays down a beauty, comes back to the pitcher, so the sacrifice is successful as Turnus down at second. Well done by Garcia. Kelly Ali, who was successful with her sacrifice bunt attempt back in the first. Steps in two down. Runner at second for the Freedom Falcons, trailing 3-0 here in the top of the third. I think this time they probably won't call on her to bunt with two outs. Off speed for strike one. Interesting thing enough, she still showed like she was going to bunt to see if she can draw the infield in and try and poke one over their heads. Yo one drilled. Boy, that's Ooh. a busy set of trees over there. Maybe those trees are wanting they should have brought their glove from home. Hope there are no birds in there. Owen oh to the count. And grounded our way as Kaliali stays alive. You ever notice whenever there's a ball coming your way, it doesn't matter if there's a screen or a net in front of you, your first instinct is always just to back away. It's just a, just a thing of nature. Instincts. Yes, very much so. Ooh. Stays alive with the foul tip on the rise ball. Gets a piece of it. So Kaylee Alia extending this at bat. Still 0-2. Freedom has shown with two hits here in three innings that Rayanne Garza is not invincible, but it's stringing some together, getting good things to happen. Well, and this is your first real opportunity right now if you are the Freedom Falcons, runner in scoring position. And Garza has been a little bit shaky as far as her control. There's been some moments where she's had it and some moments where she hasn't. That's low. As Turnes 
causing everyone to take notice. Expect to see aggressive base running from the Falcons. Outside for two and two. So a very interesting at bat. Well, Garza really is trying to get Kaleli to try to chase something out of the strike zone. She's not biting. Ooh, that hurt. And this, they're saying stop. I think the umpire is indicating a foul ball. And Ooh. out comes the head coach, Terry Johnson. Probably just wanting a little better explanation because she did swing at that. I think they're going to have a conference, which is interesting because this call would go against her the way it stands. It's not called as a hit batsman. Well, if, it is, if the call does stand as a foul ball, it would definitely extend the at-bat. Right, as Terry Johnson asking the fans to quiet down. That's the only thing with a softball game. With, 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 with the fans here and with as close to the action as they are, and it's a strikeout. So that is what Terry Johnson was arguing, and out comes Brooke Russo to argue his cause. I think they're saying it hit the bat, hit her, and then was caught by the catcher. And Brooks Russo, who's not one of the base coaches, comes out, that, but the head coach, comes out of the dugout, dugout to talk this over as he heads back in vain. So it feels like a tough break for the Freedom Falcons. No runs on one hit, no errors. One left stranded, heading into the bottom of the third, the James Logan Colts up three to nothing and looking to extend that lead. Very much so, and if you're, if you're the Logan Colts, I mean, that was really the first threat the Falcons were able to put together as far as this inning goes. And now, of course, Blaquera is set to lead off for the Logan Colts here in the bottom of the third. Again, this is the Division I championship, the first of a double header here at Cottrell Field. Well, they have the D4 championship at 4.30, and that'll face our only number one seed of the afternoon. That'll be the Salesian Pride taking on the number six seed, St. Patrick St. Vincent. And that is a rematch of last year's game, which St. Pat's won 7-2. to two. So this is the three seed versus the five seed. And the number five seed, Freedom, beating the number four seed, Castro Valley. And then the number eight seed, San Ramon Valley, who upset the top-seeded Amador Valley. Bottom of the third. Clarissa Blaquera, who reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning, leads things off here for the Colts. Ah, Colts put together a three-run inning off of four hits as Williams comes out dealing, but ball one. It's been a really interesting trend that we've seen in a lot of these tournaments, a lot of number one seeds going down this year. Ah, exactly that, and a lot of lopsided games, actually. Ball two. Oh, the, the chatter the from the fans oh, reminds me of a situation <laughs> that happened last weekend. I'll recant that as this one fouled out of play. Last week in Central Coast Section Championships were held at PAL Stadium in San Jose. And for our viewers don't know what PAL stands for, it stands for the Police Activities League, which meant there were uniformed policemen working as security and ushers as the count now two and two, and when one particular mother, perhaps, fan got a little out of hand, a fully armed policeman approached her, and no one was talking to the umpires <laughs> after he made his move. So uh, I haven't seen a fully armed, fully 
decked out policemen here today, but let me tell you that that put the kibosh on a lot of heckling I, last last weekend in San Jose. Very noticeably, everybody was on their best behavior after that. I would. People I would are guess. afraid to clap. I think <laughs> the two-two rise ball out of the zone works the count full for Blakera. So Williams, big sigh from her. It's the second hitter that has worked Williams into a full count as well. Ground ball to third. Throw in time as Blacara sits down. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Rayan Garza. Garza fouled out to center in the first. So Freedom relying on Marissa Gasca over at third. Nice catch, nice throw for the first out. Almost a very simple one hopper there to Gasca and a very strong throw from third. Ball one. Again, Rayan Garza, the senior, the star for four years for the squad. She will continue her softball career at Ohlone College. And she grinds one through for her first hit of the ball game. Second pitch she sees from Williams doesn't waste any time and gets it right into the 5.5 hole as it is commonly yeah. referred to between third and short. So nice, nice hit there. We're going to have a pitch yeah. runner here for Garza. The courtesy runners for pitchers and catchers. As Adriana Sanchez will handle that. It seems to be where the bulk of Sanchez's playing time. She only has 18 at-bats on the season. But it really does give Garza a rest. That way she doesn't have to expend too much energy on the base pass. She can just focus solely on her pitching. And so far she's been doing very well. But they don't want to mess up that formula. It's been working very well for them. Burpee, who's had three at-bats in this ball game. Remember, she was uh, up when the stolen base was foiled back in the first, and she popped up to short in the second. And now she's got one on one down here in the bottom of the third. Her team up 3 nothing. Ball one. And Burpee with a very harmless fly ball to shadow left where Emma Ryan... Gathered that one for the first out. Off speed Ooh. drilled down the left field line for one and one. It's a, that's why the third base is a hot corner there. Mm -hmm. Especially with the right-handed hitters up. You only have one move if the ball comes off that bat. And if you make the wrong move, it can either get by it or it could end up with something worse. Logan coached by Terry Johnson in her 29th year. She went to Albany High where she played basketball and was second baseman in softball. As Burby fouls one off. One and two. You're seeing Williams trying to keep the ball down a little bit, see mm -hmm. if she can force Burby into that ground ball and get an inning ending double play. You see the middle infield around double play depth right now. Good glove by the first base, <laughs> good ball handling by the first base coach. Got the Colts dug out, more alert, goes off. Island. That was quite a thwack. <laughs> yeah, good contact there. Garza one for two. Steps in to face Williams. This has been interesting as runner is going to be able to on the passed ball. Hustle down to second. So, Williams, tough outing thus far. The 1 0 delivery. 2 0. Now you're starting to see a little bit of the mental error starting to pile on top of each other because now you've got Blakera on at second on the pass ball. And this ball, our view of the right field line, a little compromised. I believe that was in fair territory. It was. So Garza heads to the bench, to the dugout, as the designated player, Michaela Derp Burpee, comes in. Still looking for her first hit. 
of the afternoon. She's got a runner in scoring position. One down, bottom of the fifth. Her team playing with a 4 nothing lead. And pops it up to second. And some easy outs now coming the way of freedom as two down for Bonasea. And remember Bonasea getting things going back in the second with a single and a run scored. Then retired on a foul ball to left in the third. It has to be frustrating for Burpee. Hasn't really gotten a chance to get a ball out of the infield. Save for the shallow left uh, pop-up that was caught by Ryan. So the dirt being kicked up by the wind here. And even though the uh, fans have been arguing balls and strikes with Mark Alvarez, I like his focus on safety and comfort for the players as a check swing dribbles to second and another play made. So after giving up the leadoff single, a relatively routine inning for the Freedom Falcons. James Logan, no runs on one hit. No errors and one left stranded. Sixth inning up next and Freedom trailing four to nothing. And fans play on sports is on Facebook and Twitter giving you news, information, and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash play on network. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Kirsten Fairchild's alongside Philip Kern. Again, an opportunity to thank the North Coast section as well as everyone at the California Interscholastic Federation. It's been a great high school year coming to a close today and a big thanks to the administration and staff here at St. Mary's College in Moraga for being so hospitable. They treated us well. Hey, we're sitting under a tent. We're sitting <laughs> under a tent. No charge for parking. No. Beautiful campus. Mm -hmm. Lots of shade for us on this 90-degree-plus exactly. day. We even have a small contingent behind us enjoying the shade as well. So. Yeah, I think we can, uh, maybe they'll help us break down the equipment afterwards. <laughs> we don't give away the shade for free, do we? Well, well of course we do. Of My course. Goodness. Why not? Why not? Ashley Garcia, the second baseman. Lead things off here in the six. Hit by a pitch back in the first. Lay down the sacrifice in the third. And Freedom really starting to run out of outs. Only six outs left for them to start a rally. And really had some chances early on with, when Rayanne Garcia Garza was struggling to find the strike zone. As Garcia almost takes out Kelly Holly in the on-deck circle. Remember, Garcia headed to Ohio State next year. I always like to see uh, local talent go into the Big Ten schools. Yeah, it's a, it seems a little unusual sometimes, so it's always fun when that happens. Exactly. Every region of the country has a pipeline for one conference or another, it seems. Yes. A called strike for one and two. In fact, I had the pleasure of calling the uh, Menlo Pacific Grove game last week, and Menlo has become a pipeline for Stanford as far as their baseball program. Pacific Road Breakers. As Garcia stays alive, who won that game? It was actually Pacific Grove, 10-4. Yeah. Pacific Grove capping a 31-0 season. They have had they have a C few CCS titles yes, under their do. belt. Yes, they do. Back-to-back -back Division Three titles. Very good program down there. In the dirt for two and two. So we haven't really seen a successful drop pitch from either pitchers mm -hmm. of the pitchers today. Seems when that's been attempted, it's gone into the dirt. And comes back with the heat. Another strikeout for Rayan Garza as Kaliali, one of the strikeout victims, 0-2, or 0-1 with a sacrifice, steps in. Six strikeouts. Oh, Excuse me, go ahead. I was just <laughs> mentioning that Garza is starting to look a little bit stronger now. And now, Kaliali is going to first. That's right, hit by a pitch. The third hit batsman of the afternoon. So one down, one on. Ryan Garza has hit the number two, three. And six hitter, six today. As 
people willing to lean in. Mm -hmm. A lion who singled back in the first, and then fouled out to first in the fourth. Now down in the count, 0 and 1. So one down, one on for this Freedom Falcon squad trailing for nothing. And this is the one one. this is the ideal situation you want if you're Freedom. You start you're trying to get a rally started, and it's the heart of the order right now. The Lion, essentially your best hitter both for contact and for power. And two on Homer would do wonders here. Chases Ooh. the rise for one and two. Got a tip got a tip of it, but it was fouled straight back, so the timing was there. But not quite the contact she wanted. And a lion still talking it over with herself. <laughs> exactly. That's a called strike. Ooh. So the first punch out of the seven for Rayanne Garcia as Maddie Williams, a chance to help her cause two out, but runner on. Williams still looking for her first hit. Swings to strike one. And that strikeout to Elion, that's a rough at bat. Get the knees buckled, you think you had lived to see another pitch, and turns out it was around the plate. As Williams pokes this one into the shallow center field, it drops for the single, and Kayla Ali is able to scamper over to third, so a two-out single by Williams as a center fielder. For Logan, a little bit of a slow start, but Matos just couldn't catch up with that one. Almost added a diving catch to her list of highlights for today, and that would have been probably the capper to her day. So Ryan, it was hit by a pitch back in the second, and then she was fouled out to left in the fourth. So two down, runners at the corner for Ryan. So Ramsey Salter pinch running for Williams. First chance looking at Salter since Williams' first opportunity to be a base runner. Remember, courtesy runners for the pitcher and catcher do not count as pinch runners in softball. As foul tip, the throw down and off the throwing error. One run comes in. Is this the spark that Freedom was looking for? Well, you would have to think so. Now they're going to have a mount conference, and Bonansea can't exactly be too pleased. I think she was thinking that there, there was going to be some sort of a miscommunication going on. She threw down to second, and it got into the outfield. So they're really hashing it out. And well, who was covering second? Right. So we'll see how... James Logan deals with this adversity. As Freedom fans perking up a bit. Well, price, well they finally got the goose egg off the scoreboard. That'll, that'll definitely do it for you. And you see the composure by Garza. She comes back, put Ryan in a hole. Owen to the count. Two down, runner at second. Chance to extend the inning. And Ryan Oof. laying off that pitch. Probably had a fleeting thought that maybe she had let one get by. The one, two. Another punch out for Ray and Garza. Ryan doesn't like it. Actually making the claim to the umpire that the pitch hitter said that to him twice. But obviously... The break's not going Freedom's way right now. No, these little calls just seem to be going. I'm not saying they're incorrect calls, but they seem to be going James Logan's way. Freedom, however, one run on one hit, one James Logan error, and they leave one stranded. Heading into the bottom of the fourth, it's now a three-run ball game. James Logan leads it 4-1. to one. And fans, it's the last day of events here in the North Coast section, but you can relive all the great games we covered in the 2012-2013 season by going to our on-demand page. Catch all the great highlights from this high school sports season right here on your destination for high school sports in the North Coast section 
playonsports.com. The producer of this broadcast is Thomas Conroy. On camera, Vincent Huergas. I'm Kirsten Fairchild alongside Philip Kern. You're watching PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. It's been a pleasure to bring you 2012-2013 season. Wrapping up today here at the North Coast Section Division I Softball Championships. And it's a bit bittersweet thinking that it is the <laughs> last day of high school sports events for the school year. I mean, it seems to, it seems to have just flown by. It seemed like just a few months ago we were just talking football already. Exactly that. And already we have a chance to look forward to football as Melina Rodriguez, mm -hmm. her third at bat. She singled and scored a run back in the second. Reached on an error in the fourth. Took ball one. So bottom the six. James Logan up. 4-1. Looking to add to their tally. Amber, go ahead. I'm sorry. Any sort of insurance runs at this point is going to help, but Williams has really been able to stop the bleeding here a couple times already. And Rodriguez leans into it. But what a catch in center field. Center field seeing a lot of action from both teams, and this time it's Leva showing why she's headed to northern Colorado in the fall. Great speed out there in center. Almost got to be a uh, a collision out there as mm -hmm. as Kaleli ne nearly collided with her for a second. But Leva calling things off, saying, "Hey, I got this one." Peters, two runs scored in this ball game. The foul tip off Davenport's mask again. A bit of a rough go behind the plate there for Davenport today. If it hasn't been a foul ball to the mask, it's been <laughs> something else. But she's been hanging tough back there. That's one thing I'll give her. Absolutely. As she looks for the pitch, delivers it to Williams, and this one popped up. A lot of room and just, I think, a little out of the reach of the Falcons. First glance, that ball really kind of trailing away. At first glance, it looked like Someone was going to be able to run that down. The one thing you notice about Peters, he's one of the taller players for Logan, and taller players usually have longer arms. So see if she can but pound the inside corner on him. And she finds the gap, gap between left center. For her second hit of the ball game, a one-out single by Peters as Deanne Garza. One for two on the afternoon with an RBI, steps in. And of course, Peters, if you remember, got everything started with that two-run double back in the second, so she's had a very nice day for herself. Yeah, Peters also playing shortstop. Great pitch by Williams. Yep, I agree with the unbelievable pitch. <laughs> you know, Williams has struggled, struggled early. You know, when you bring the heat and the other batters are stringing together hits and runs it can put a damper on your confidence as Garza chases a rise ball and you see the collision as the shortstop wow. uh, Ryan ending up in the cleats of her teammate her <laughs> second baseman it's already a couple of close calls so communication not exactly uh not exactly working out there right now. And perhaps we can see from the flag the wind going that way is Matos, who had the two-out single. That's going to be a foul ball. Back in the fourth, one for two. Lexi Matos, the center fielder. She's had a nice day to play, too, one for two on herself, but of course we can't forget her great throw from center back in the first inning. One and one, the count to Matos. That another foul down the third baseline. Williams has settled in. As 
Terry Johnson, I haven't seen a coach talk too often, but I think she wants a, as much, but she wants a base runner. So a pinch runner in this situation for Peters, the shortstop. And it's number one, Cynthia Salang-Sang. So Salang Sang into the ball game. Two down, bottom of the six. Salang Sang at first. For the number nine hitter, Lexi Mattis, the center fielder. James Logan with a 4-1 lead. And that is... Confusion for Freedom, not sure what happened there. That was a, a pinch out, of course, but not, de not delivered with the same vigor <laughs> as we have seen. No. Uh, so I think that had Freedom questioning what the outs were. So James Logan, no runs on one hit, no Freedom errors, one left stranded. It has all come down to the final three outs for the Freedom Falcons trailing 4-1. They will set up send up the bottom of the order as Adrian Davenport, the catcher, lead things off. And fans, don't forget to stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where we will select our player of the game and have a recap of all of this afternoon's action. That's all coming up after the game right here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. And again, a 4.30 first pitch for our Division Four game. So D1 taking the field first here. Followed by the top-seeded Salesian Pride taking on the six-seeded St. Patrick St. Vincent Bruins, a rematch of last year's game. So it's been somewhat of a difficult afternoon for Adrian Davenport, but a chance here. Remember, she singled back to lead things off in the fifth after fouling out to left in the second. And you hear the Logan fans cheering in anticipation that they are three outs away from a successful Division I title defense. And Davenport fights one off, going the other way, and it drops in right field. And just like that, Davenport has given freedom hope and given their fans something to cheer. She couldn't have placed that any better if she tried. No, absolutely not. What a great opposite field approach for Davenport and really gets things going for the Freedom Falcons. And it looks like we're gonna have a pinch hitter for Emily Leva. That's right, Caitlin Fernandez, excuse me, Caitlin Ferguson is going to take this at bat from Leva. So one on, no outs, top of the seventh. We're also going to have Colburn, I believe, as the courtesy runner. So a lot of score keeping needed. Colburn, remember, was unsuccessful with that stolen base attempt back in the fifth. That was going from first to second. That was the uh, first out after Davenport had singled. So Caitlin Ferguson's first chance to look at Garza. Looks at ball one. Well, this will be a big moment for Ray Ann Garza. Put the finishing touches on this title defense. And a beauty of a pitch for Ferguson, but she lays off for strike one. One and one the count. And Bonansea did not have to move her glove. No. She set the target, and it was right there. Low for two and one as the Freedom fans pick up their chatter. And they're starting to get a little bit excited. We're, we're surrounded by Freedom fans to our right and to our left as well. And you can maybe hear the chatter from the dugout, which has come alive here in the top of the seventh. Exactly. The 2-1. Foul back for two and two. Ferguson really giving Garza a fight too. Even in the count two and two, taking advantage of any mistake that Garza might make. And she's, had, she's made her fair share, but they haven't really come back to hurt the Logan Colts. 
Ferguson hitting in the number eight spot. Remember, it's the top of the order that has been completely unsuccessful against Ray and Garza. First hit came from the number four hitter, the cleanup hitter, a lion. Two and two, the count to Ferguson. Low for a full count, just the second of the afternoon for Rayanne Garza. Another example of where sometimes you've got to be a little bit selective in how you're aggressive at the plate. And Ferguson, even though she's just come off the bench, a very, very close opportunity here, working Garza to a full count. Ground ball to third, runner holds, the throw across in time. So good checking of the runner by Deanne Garza. However, that means Turnus is up. And remember, Turnus, two for two on the afternoon. She's made some good contact today, and she's got a chance with a runner in scoring position to really slice this lead in half. And she has not had a base runner in those previous at-bats. She makes solid contact, however, the center fielder with a great jump. And James Logan just one out away, courtesy of the catch by Matos in center field. It was great contact there by Turnes. Unfortunately, it was just right to somebody. And now you can hear Logan really cranking up the volume. As you said, one out away from a successful Division I title defense. And it's all up to Marissa Gasca to make sure they at least hold off the celebration for a little bit. Gasca 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. If there was ever a time for her to catch fire, it's right here, runner in scoring position. Her team trailing by three, tying run on deck. It's Garcia, ball one. And cut the tension with a steak knife here, even though it's a three run lead. Ground ball, that's foul. Oof. You see the dive there by Rodriguez. And it was fouled by the slimmest of margins too. It was very, very close as it was going over the back. I thought it was gonna be fair. We'd be running for a while. So runner tying, base runner tying her shoe. Remember that's Colburn. Mariska Gars Gaska, the third baseman. Ground ball to third. The throw across and James Logan has done it. James Logan Colts defended their title. A 4-1 victory over the Freedom Falcons, the number three seed, the 2013 North Coast Section Division I champion. What a great effort there by the Colts. They, they really had a fair share of chances there for the Freedom Falcons, and really the game was won and lost right there in that second inning. Logan was able to string hits together, got a three spot on the board, and give credit to Rayanne Garza. At, Early on, it didn't look like she had some of her best stuff. But once she got comfortable, once she found her rhythm, she was really able to keep the lid on this Falcons lineup. And the Falcons really gave them some scares there a couple of times during this game. But in the end, the Logan Colts had just enough offense and some great defense on top of that. Let's not forget that. They played a very solid all-around game, and they deserve this one. The senior Rayanne Garza, seven strikeouts, no walks, three hits batsmen. She gives up six hits and one run. And the James Logan Colts, what a season. They end at 26 and one. The Freedom Falcons move to 19, six and one on the season. We're gonna step away and return with our playonsports.com player of the game and our post game show. The James Logan Colts of Union City, the D1 champs here in Moraga today.
Back at Cottrell Field in Moraga, James Logan has done it. They have defended their Division I title. Welcome, everyone. I'm Kirsten Fairchild alongside our player of the game, the junior shortstop, Taylor Peters. Taylor, what a great day at the plate and out in the field. Taylor, two for three on the afternoon with a double, two RBI, two runs scored. You really were the offensive firepower, really stepping up for your squad today. I know so much is made about your team's pitching and your defense. How does it feel to be able to score runs on this tough freedom squad? Um, I just tried my best to get runs on the board. Uh, we knew we had to hit and we knew we had to play defense, but that was it pretty much. There's such a great tradition when it comes to James Logan in the sport of softball, and Rayanne Garza has had four good years in the circle for your squad. What's it like having her as a leader out there? Uh, she's, she's ridiculous. She's, like, she's, always, um, on, she's always pumping us up, even if we are down, like if Johnson or, um, corrects us, she's always there to correct us too and uh, give us good feedback. But she's amazing on the mound and everything, yeah. Great. And what does this victory mean to you? You were able to defend your title, and um, I'm sure that was probably a goal that you all set this season. Yeah. Well, for uh, for me, they, I was pretty much getting it for the seniors because they, they're very special to our team because they won back when they were freshmen. But that was pretty much our goal is to get it for Johnson and get it for the seniors. Well, congratulations on a great victory. Taylor Peters, our PlayOnSports.com player of the game. Philip Kern and I will be back to wrap up the action from Cottrell Field. James Logan, a 4-1 winner over Freedom. They are the 2013 North Coast Section D1 champs. Back at St. Mary's College in Moraga, California, the North Coast Section D1 title game decided. James Logan Colts defending the title with a 4-1 victory over Freedom. Alongside Philip Kern, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. Thank you for joining us for PlayOnSports.com's post-game show. Well, Ray Ann Garza, what a career she's had at James Logan. Threw a six-hitter today, still registered seven strikeouts, no walks, three hits batsmen. I'm not sure she would say it's her best game of the season, but it might just be her most memorable, a North Coast section championship came from it. It probably was, and I think you mentioned it right there. Even though she didn't